Dislocation of patella. Let's discuss it in detail. Dislocation of patella or kneecap occurs when patella slips out of the group where it sits normally on the femur. So this is the anatomy. Uh, this is we have a knee joint and the patellofemoral joint. This is the group where, it, uh, where patella sits on the femur. Now in case of dislocation, patella slips out of this groove and clinically this kind of picture appears. Laterally, patella slips out of the groove and this is where we can see the patella on the lateral side instead on the center. Now causes of patella dislocation. Dislocation occurred due to a number of reasons. The very first is the trauma. Now any direct blow on the patella or twisting injuries, especially in sports, result into patella dislocation. There are some anatomical factors, especially the large Q angle. Q angle is actually the angle between the quadricep muscle and the patella tendon. If this angle is more, there are chances of patella dislocation. Some congenital conditions like Larsen syndrome, arthrogryposis, and diastropic dysplasia. All these conditions are associated with the patellar dislocations as they promote some form of joint laxity and results into dislocation of patella. Type of dislocations. So we usually classify into three types, acute dislocation, recurrent dislocation and habitual dislocation. We we'll discuss each of them in detail. Out of these three, recurrent and habitual dislocations are the one that show some kind of abnormalities which are developmental in nature and make the patella quite unstable. So let's discuss acute dislocation in detail first. So acute dislocation of patella results from the sudden contraction of the quadricep. As you can see here, sudden contraction of the quadricep while the knee is flexed or semi-flexed. So often seen in its sports. So patella dislocates laterally. Patella always dislocates laterally. Clinical features are the effusion as you can appreciate here. Obvious deformity, one can see the roundness on the lateral side. Tenderness anterior medially, this is due to the stretching or the rupture of the capsule which is present on the medial side. And patient unable to straighten the knee until it is reduced. So these are the clinical features that we see. Treatment. Sometimes dislocation reduce spontaneously but, is, but it is sometimes. But most of the times reduction needs to be done. So in case of reduction, a medial word pressure, as you can see here in the image, a medial word pressure is being applied by the surgeon on the patella while the knee is straightened. So this is how it is reduced. Once it is done, an above knee POP cast is given to the patient for around three to four weeks, which is then followed by mobilization. Now, sometimes we see, as you can see, appreciate here, there is a small chip. Now this small chip is intra-articular and this is known as the osteochondral fragment. Now this osteochondral fragment actually is a piece of a bone which is covered with the articular cartilage. So sometime this osteochondral fragment may be shaved off either from the patella or from the femoral condyle at the time of dislocation. Now if this fragment is present, if this fragment is shaved off, it will result into repeated episodes of pain. Patient will complain that there is a pain in the joint. Swelling and patient always get a sensation of a loose body inside the joint. So once it is diagnosed, arthroscopic removal of this is required. Now comes the recurrent dislocation of patella. So this recurrent dislocation is most of the time is seen in girls, especially young girls. So first dislocation occurs during the adolescence, but with the time, the frequency increases. As the uh, girl ages, the frequency of this dislocation uh, increases. That's why the recurrent dislocation of patella. So occur often when the knees are straightened from the flex or the semi-flex position. Patients show generalized congenital laxity, which results into this kind of dislocation. Now let's see the pathology. First episode of traumatic dislocations, once it is done, there is a tearing of the capsule on the medial side of the patella. Now if this tearing is not healed properly, it will result into the persistent laxity in that area. Now this laxity will result into recurrent dislocation. Now due to the recurrent dislocation, there is a damage to the contiguous surfaces of the patella and the femoral condyle. 
which will result into the flattening as there is a recurrent dislocation and the surfaces are getting damaged. So there is a flattening and further dislocation. So this keep on increasing with time. Now there are certain abnormalities that contribute to the recurrent dislocation. The first is the shallow intercondylar groove. So normally we have this kind of groove, intercondylar groove where patella sits. But sometimes this groove is shallow or if there is an underdeveloped lateral condyle, this will result into the recurrent dislocation of patella. Next is a small size patella. Usually we have a specific size of patella, but if the size of patella is a small, that will also contribute to the recurrent dislocation of patella. Excessive joint laxity, especially on the medial side. Next is high lying patella, which is known as the patella alta. This is a normal condition. Uh, patella usually sits on the femoral condyle. Sometimes it is patella baja where the patella is inferior line and sometimes there is a patella alta which is a high line patella. So in high line patella and patella alta there are chances of recurrent dislocation. Other condition, other abnormality is the genu velgum. In genu velgum the line of pull of quadriceps shifts laterally. So it will pull the patella laterally whenever there is a contraction of the quadriceps. This will also result into the recurrent dislocation of patella. So what is the treatment? Treatment is consist of operative reconstruction. Now in this reconstruction what happened? The insertion of the patella tendon, this patella tendon on the tibia reciprocity is shifted medially and downward. This is an original place and it will shift here on the medial side and downward. So the line of pull of the quadriceps shifts medially. So this will uh, not allow the patella to dislocate laterally when there is a contraction of the quadriceps. This operation is known as the Hossos operation. Now there are some current trends. Now according to the current trends, it is important to find the cause of the recurrent dislocation of patella and correct the cause. So the cause could be any, uh, like we have already discussed, genu velgum, increased QR angle, there may be a... Uh, uh, laxity of the structures, especially the medial patellofemoral ligament. So we need to correct the cause instead of correcting the problem. Corrective surgery uh, should be aimed at correcting the underlying cause, which could be any like increased QR angle, genu velgum or joint laxity or patella alta. It could be any. And the, patel, uh, and the operation are usually done arthroscopically assisted. Now this is the medio patellofemoral ligament reconstruction. As we see patella dislocates laterally uh, sometimes due to the laxity of the structures on the medial side. So we need to uh, reconstruct the medial patellofemoral ligament as this is a major ligament because it stabilizes the patella and prevents the patella from sliding out of the groove. So this is how it is reconstructed. Now comes the uh, habitual dislocation of patella. This is the third type, habitual dislocation of patella. Habitual dislocation of patella means patella dislocates laterally every time when the knee is flexed and relocates when the knee extends spontaneously. So whenever the individual uh, flex the knee joint, there is a dislocation of the patella and it relocates spontaneously when the individual extends the knee joint. This is an uncommon dislocation and often we see this in childhood, especially early childhood. Now, what are the causes? The first cause is the underlying defects, which are very similar to those we have seen in the recurrent dislocation, like the patella alta, genu velgum, increased QR angle, a high lying patella, all these causes. Now, other than that, shortened quadricep is one of the reasons, especially the vastus lateralis component of quadricep. So, when there is a uh, shortened vastus lateralis component of quadricep, it will result into an abnormal pull on the patella. As you can see here, this is the vastus lateralis. If it is shortened, it will pull the patella laterally when the knee is flexed. Now, why there is a shortening of vastus lateralis? There are studies which shows that intramuscular injections often given to the children during infancy. Now, during infancy, due to the intramuscular injections in this region, in the region of vastus lateralis, there is a fibrosis of tissues which will result into the uh, shortened quadricep, especially the vastus lateralis component. Now, sometimes, <clears throat> other than that, there is an abnormal band of fibrous tissues which tee either the vastus lateralis muscle with the IT tract or the IT band. So what about the treatment? If no treatment is given, then the patella dislocates permanently. 
so treatment is very important so treatment includes the release of the tritus structures on the lateral side and repair of the lax structures on the medial side now this is how it is done a vertical midline skin incision is given now lateral structures are released which are tight and the repairing on the structures which are present on the medial side is done especially the uh, capsular plication now this capsular plication is a surgical procedure that tightens the capsules around the joint and treat the instability pain and the conditions similar to this an additional rechecking mechanism of some sort of created to prevent redislocation for this semi semitendinosus tendon is used which is used in such a way that it prevents the redislocation so this is all about the treatment of habitual dislocation of patella the release of tritis structures on the lateral side repair of the lax structure on the medial side and check in mechanism with the help of semi tendinosus mass i hope you like the video in case if you like the video do like share and subscribe the channel